Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News. <clears throat> Take heart, my friends, the news is not good. <clears throat> As we know daily, um, that <clears throat> we are seeing more and more evidence that we are in trouble. And um, there are many ways to deal with this information. Um, <clears throat> there isn't really a wrong way, I don't think. Uh, you know, denialism isn't great, uh, but it is understandable on some level as a human reaction. I don't think um, that's a helpful reaction, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> eventually you're going to have to understand that it is, um, it is us doing the destruction. We are very good at it. We are well-equipped. And um, <clears throat> we don't, show any signs of stopping as evidenced by this article here from the guardian sushi king pays record 3.1 million dollars for endangered bluefin tuna in japan the winning auction bid the bid for the enormous tuna was more than double the price fetched five years ago a record 3.1 million dollars Paid for a giant bluefin tuna at Tokyo's new fish market, <clears throat> which replaced the world's famous, the world famous Tsukiji late last year. Tsukiji, Tsukiji. <clears throat> I think I got it right on the last one. The winning bid for the prized but endangered species at the pre-dawn auction was more than double the 2013 annual New Year auction. The 278 kilogram fish or 612 pounds was caught off Japan's northern coast. It was paid by sushi tycoon Kiyoshi Kimura, who runs the popular sushi Zanmai chain. Kimura's uh, Kiyomura Corporation has often won the annual auction in the past. Japanese broadcaster NHK showed a beaming Kimura saying that he was surprised by the high price of tuna this year. Oh, so, <clears throat> surprise. Uh, but he added the quality of the tuna I bought is the best. The auction prices are way above usual for blue t bluefin tuna. The fish normally sells for up to $40 a pound, but the price rise rises to over $200 a pound near the year's end, especially for prized catches from Oma in northern Japan. Japanese are the biggest consumers of the torpedo-shaped bluefin tuna, and surging consumption here and overseas has led to overfishing of the species. <clears throat> Experts warn it faces possible extinction. With stocks of Pacific bluefin depleted by 96% from their pre-industrial levels. The celebration surrounding the annual Pacific bluefin auction hides how deeply in trouble this species really is, said Jamie Gibbon, associate manager for global tuna conservation at the Pew Charitable Trust. There are signs of progress toward protecting the bluefin, and Japan and other governments have backed plans to rebuild Pacific bluefin stocks. How are you going to do that with a target of 20% of historic levels by 2034? Okay. Uh, I don't know how you do that. <clears throat> you stop fishing, I guess, uh, or something. Last year's auction was the last at Tsukiji before the market shifted to a new facility on the former gas plant site on Tokyo Bay. The move was delayed repeatedly due to concerns over soil contamination. Oh, boy. Um, watch out now. We're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to save the planet by doing exactly what we've always been doing, or maybe we'll just do it slightly differently. Uh, no. Next article <clears throat> from CBS news, salt water fish extinction seen by 2048. The apocalypse has a new date. This is from November 3rd, 2000. Oh, this is really old. Hold on. Didn't even see the date on this. Excuse me. Anyways, this is from uh, over 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 2006. <laughs> I'll just dip into this real quick. Uh, 2048. Well, we've seen this over and over again. This is nothing new. Um, 90% uh, drop in many species. 
a uh, thousand year history of 12 coastal regions around the world, including San Francisco and Chesapeake Bay in the US, Adriatic, Baltic and North Seas. Um, their bottom line, everything that lives in the ocean is important. The diversity of ocean life is key to its survival. The areas of the ocean with the most different kinds of life are the healthiest. Well, really, it's not too late. We can turn this around, Worm says, but less than 1% of global ocean is effectively protected right now. Okay, I think this is like a rehash of something I just read the other day. Sorry, excuse me, moving on. <clears throat> uh, I always love when that happens. Um, I grabbed that uh, from somewhere and I thought it was a brand spanking new article. But you know what? Um, scientists have been saying the same things for many years, in fact, decades. And the news is the same, if not worse, right now. And our reaction is mostly the same, if not slightly more alarmed. Oh, <clears throat> maybe we should do something about this. Uh, next up, this is from January 2nd, 2019, the gathering climate storm and the media cover-up. Earth is now substantially out of, I think I got this from Sam Carana's Facebook page, Earth is now sub substantially out of energy balance. The amount of solar energy that Earth absorbs exceeds the energy radiated back to space. The principal manifestations of this energy imbalance are continued global warming on decadal timescales and continued increase in ocean heat content. James Hansen. 2018. By the way, this is by Dr. Andrew Glickson. <clears throat> the people have no voice since they have no information. No first world country has ever managed to eliminate so entirely from its media all objectivity, much less dissent. That's a quote by Gore Vidal. With the exception of the few who comprehend the nature of a Faustian bargain, <clears throat> some billionaires, captains of industry, and their political and media mouthpieces are driving, driving driving humanity toward self-destruction through the two biggest enterprises on earth the fossil fuel industry which is devastating the earth atmosphere and the industrial military machine leading toward nuclear war the rest of the world is dragged subconsciously <clears throat> induced by bread and circuses again i say <clears throat> we allow all these destructive practices to just go ahead unimpeded um you know, uh, 5G, oh yeah, oh, sounds great. Let's bring it on. A few people are like, I don't know, but mostly it's just like, you know, carry on people. Uh, we need this and it's going to happen because we say so, that's how we deal with new technology. So why not let the answers or um, solutions uh, have their way and have their say <clears throat> um, instead? By close analogy with the tobacco and denial syndrome, albeit with consequences affecting the entire earth, the fossil fuel industry has been playing climate pseudoscientists, paying climate pseudoscientists, pseudoscientists to propagate fabricated untruths regarding the origins and consequences of global warming wide, widely disseminated by the media. Despite irrefutable evidence for global warming, such fabrications are still quoted by pro-coal lobbies and compliant politicians, including denial of basic laws of physics, i.e. the, back, the back body, uh, black body radiation laws of Planck, uh, Stefan Boltzmann, and Kirchhoff. Deni two, denial of direct observations and measurements in nature, in particular the sharp rises of temperatures, ice melt rates, sea level rise, and extreme weather events. Exactly, denialists deny these very ob obvious and... Uh, Direct, directly observational um, uh, measurements are happening. Denial of the global warming origin of extreme weather events, i.e. the closely monitored rise in storms, hurricanes, fires, and droughts in several parts of the world. Again, these things are obviously happening. <clears throat> Nobody's making these things up. Nobody's making things, these things happen. I'm sorry. These are happening because of global warming. This has been predicted for years. Uh, and here they are. <clears throat> Four, denial of the bulk of the peer-reviewed literature summed up by the IPCC reports. Five, denial of conclusions of the world's premier climate research organizations, NASA, NOAA, NSIDC, National Snow and Ice Data Center, Hadley Met, Tyndale, Potsdam, WMO, uh, Cicero, Baum, and other organizations. In view of the rapidly growing direct evidence from the increase in extreme weather events, the common tactic has changed from outright denial to a minimization of the significance and consequences of the shift in the state of the climate. Read more. <clears throat> oh, 
here's a link to crimes against the earth. Whereas news items channeled by international news agencies regarding extreme weather events are generally reported, at least by national broadcasters, the plethora of discussion and debate programs on TV and radio stations mostly overlook the enhanced toxic effects of carbon, carbon gases or relegate it behind sports and entertainment news in most instances. Discussion panels focus on the inside political machinations rather than the critical issue themselves. According to Mary, Mary DeBrett, we are now in the middle of perfect storm of miscommunication about climate change. Various factors have converged to confound rational public con conversation. Indeed, public opinion polling indicates that although there is widespread acceptance of climate change resulting from human activities, the public's preparedness to pay for action to mitigate climate change is actually declining. Even as climate scientists warn of the increasing urgency for action, these results signal a serious problem in the public communication of climate change. They reflect this perfect storm where tensions between the media, politicians, and various lobby groups have made it impossible for scientists and other others with appropriate expertise to cut through. The major influence the media exerts on public opinion and the extent to which it can be referred to as the tail which wags the political dog allows it nearly as much or more political power as political leaders, chief bureaucrats, and heads of corporation, a power accompanied with little responsibility. Um, indeed, this is a great <clears throat> article. Um, it really gets right to the point. It's uh, short and succinct. Uh, you know, <clears throat> spread it to your friends, uh, neighbors, loved, loved ones, or don't. Um, well, not only is the media complicit in the lack of political discussion about this, they're complicit in the brainwashing <clears throat> and the, the sleepwalking of the public uh, in, the, um, in the belief that we, you know, this is how we're supposed to live. This paradigm is the only paradigm. We can't live any other way. We're supposed to continually buy things and get cars and go places and have clothes and, right? Um, our industrial society, our industrial capitalist society runs on this, uh, this programming that is, you know, being fed to us all the time. Um, so if we're really going to have a realist, realistic discussion around climate change, we also have to have a realistic discussion around the programming that we're constantly fed, the ideas that we've, all of us have grown up with, um, <clears throat> that this is how we live. This is how we do it. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go to school and get a job, and make this much money and have life insurance and health insurance. And, you know, all of the things that we experience in this life are part of this programming. So it's very, it's a very intricate um, illusion that we live in. Intricately built, very complex, but it is an illusion because um, when the illusion is broken by the, uh, by the news of climate change, when the reality of our biosphere being more important than our jobs and our cars and our college and our homes and all that stuff, that's more important because the biosphere keeps us alive and those other things keep us, keeps us alive in a certain way for a temporary amount of time. Um, those things need to go away. And in order to communicate that realistically, the media, um, they would also have to communicate that everything that they're trying to sell you and tell you is, <clears throat> is false uh, or, or uh, destructive. So, you know, that's the reality we live in. We need to tell people, start telling people that these things are destructive. The constant consumerism is destructive. That the ability to just go out and buy anything you want is not actually something that you want to have. Um, something that should not be allowable. It shouldn't be allowed. Uh, 14 different kinds of toothpaste should not be allowable. Who, you know, whatever. Who cares? Um, you know, our our freedom of choice and what we can consume and what we can buy is actually um, a trap. <clears throat> it's a cage. Um, and that cage is the unraveling of the biosphere because of this desire and this need to consume constantly um, all the things which are killing our planet. Um, that is all I have for you today. Thank you all for being awake and alive, uh, and 
in tune to this information. Um, your voice is necessary uh, in carrying out this, you know, carrying on this information in spreading this information if you can in being prepared to act on this information in order to, in order to um, prepare others or show others, you know, a different way to live or, you know, a way to, um, a way to deal with uh, this information, a way to accept this information. It is all, all of this is very important. And thank you always for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. Uh, if you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace. Thank you.